Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola. Thanks for joining us again for History Makers. Well, the 2017 U.S. Women's Amateur quarterfinal match between Jai Yen Wu and Lauren Stevenson, it really seemed like any other competitive match play match. Stevenson was one of the best players in the country, and she was one down heading into the 17th tee at San Diego Country Club. And Dave, the match was setting up for an exciting finish, but what followed turned into the longest 18-hole match in USGA Championship history. Enjoy the thrilling conclusion of the record-breaking match right here. A lot of dramatics here yesterday. Only 326 yards and a must-find in the fairway. Yesterday's hole location was tucked in the left front. Today, up top on the far back right side here. And she got a good break to stay in the short cut of rough. Everything here kicks right to left where that hole location is. You got to carry that at least 20 on. And the flag stick is 27 back. And now Stevenson from the right rough with a little tree trouble. Brad actually got very lucky. She hit the cart path with her drive. Her ball looks like someone stepped on it. But she can hoist this up over the tree from 64 yards. She heard her comment there. It clipped a tree or a little bit of the branch. And this one is going to be, even though it's uphill, it's swinging considerably from her right to left. So once it gets to the top of the hill, it's actually going to pick up speed and gain momentum as it's moving left towards the hole. Yeah. Got to be at least 60 feet here. With the one one up lead here, she's just trying to get it within a three foot radius, put a little bit pressure on Ooh. You gotta hit these putts solid. And that's good good control of the distance there. Still gonna have a little bit of break in that. Putt there for par. Now, ooh, to win the hole. Oh, she had that she, right on the track. She sure did, she? Brad. Boy, when you got to make a putt like that, you hate to leave it short. Stevenson concedes that to ooh. And this is one of those putts, Brad, that she's just got to put on the left edge and let gravity take it. I think this is definitely a left edge putt. It's all speed. These are tough putts. It's a time too. You got to be careful not to take too much time. You know, it, a lot of times when you get nervous, if you're a slow player, you slow down. If you're a quick player, you speed up. And you want to make a decision. You want to commit. Well, these are the putts that she says the claws really helped her. She says she keep, makes her stay down into the ball. She just feels like she just has a better role with the clock. Oh, four, Stevenson, five. The match is all square. You know, it looked to me like she was aiming that face so far to the right. She pulled that putt. And now the match is all square, going to the hardest hole on the golf course. <coughs> They will head to 18, all square. And the wind is really coming across from the players from the left to right here. And with that whole location is you want to try to get it down the left hand side here to give you a little bit of angle into this hole. Now, well, good ball there from Ooh. And Lauren Stevenson now on the 18th after missing that short putt. She has not played this hole since Tuesday, hasn't played it in match play at all. Must find the fairway. And with Lauren's length here, she could have quite the advantage. If she can hit a good one, she can get almost down this hill. She did just that. She's got a nice angle in on the left-hand side. She's got a flat line. 
And we are back at the 18th, an all square match. The 13 year old here, second shot from 160. This is a seven iron. She's got plenty of room to chase that on up. And that one misses right in the bunker, so that will be a tough up and in for Ooh. Starting to see it, except for maybe Ooh. Stevenson second at 18. And that was a pitching wedge from 134 yards. She did exactly what she had to do right there. She put it in the middle of the green, gave herself a shot at birdie. She is on the slight upslope. She's about seven yards to work with. So all in all, not an easy bunker shot, but really one she can definitely get inside of eight feet. She's going to aim this out right at the shadow of the flag stick. Good touch there. So a chance for a par. We haven't seen too many sand saves today. This could be maybe our first one. And as you're looking, you know, right now we've got three college students into the finals. If, uh, Lauren wins. We could have four college students. We have a pack. You just go to school. We have a Pac-12 matchup on one side of the bracket. Texas is through, and Bama, if Stevenson can make this putt, will find herself in these semifinals. The good thing here with it being straight up the hill she can be aggressive with it really no worry of knocking this one three or four feet by yeah we've seen a lot of those today Nicole you're three and four feet by or three and four feet short Stevenson three putt at the 17th to lose that hole and square this match and a chance now to get one back in advance. And Shane the problem after you knock a putt by like you did on the last hole your natural instincts is to be a little tentative on the next one. Snuggles just pie, so most likely concede for a par. There it is. So a four for Lauren Stevenson, and who now has to make another one of these putts. We've seen Julie her slam in the back. This one is a must make if she wants to go to extra holes. She has a real compact, nice and firm stroke. And she doesn't get wavy. I like it. I mean, she's well, she's 13. She should have a nice compact stroke, but. Uh, this is no gimme. She did see the line of Lawrence, Lawrence right there, so that should help her. I don't think this does much, Nicole. No, it, it really doesn't. At the very end, it looks like it could fall right, but this is one of those you talked about firm. Aim it inside the hole and keep the pace up. From who? Chayin Wu slams that one in the back for a par, and they will go to the 10th, their 19th hole, and we get extra golf. Bonus golf, we're happy with that. And this 10th hole is no easy hole. Played the third toughest in the metal play. Before this championship began, the average age was 18.86 for the 156 in the field. All three of the players that have advanced are older than that. Chance for Stevenson to join that party, the 20 year old, but ooh, it's going to send him to an extra. Well, Lauren, part of this hole's 
first this morning match and ooh bogey so and Lauren has a distance on this hole that I think really helps if you can get a shorter iron into this hole where that hole location is it's a big advantage less of a lot less of a crowd to fight for way through mm -hmm. yeah. Stevenson won this hole in this match earlier with a par. Well, number one thing here is get the put the pressure on your opponents. Get this ball in the fairway. Today is playing 409 yards. Good angle. That back bunker on the left, I think Lauren can get to. It's 230 yards. to the tee. Now it's just in the first cut, but advantage Stevenson here on the 10th, their 19th. One match left on the golf course in these quarterfinals. Who will be first at the 19th? This is going to be a four hybrid from 193 yards. The ball is considerably below her feet, which is going to make it go out to the right. And with this wind coming from right to left, she's actually going to be hitting back into it. Now it just chases up just short of this 10th green. Now Stevenson. And from 37 yards closer, this is from 156 yards. Julie, she's got to be looking at the big flagpole just right of it and let this wind take it right back to this hole. I like that, Nicole. I think that's a perfect place for her to aim. We'll give her a nice little uphill, uphill putt. And caddy for me anytime, Nicole. That was an eight iron. Very nice show. In fact, she, I think she was listening to you, Nicole. These two make their way up to the tenth. And Julie, there's only been one birdie between these two players all day. Yeah, and they've just been back and forth. And but like she said, you know, birdies are tough out here today. I mean, they make make a lot of pars, put the pressure on your opponent to make a mistake. That's how a lot of the matches were won today. Well, who is surveying her third? In this really straight up the hill, she's got plenty of, of green to work with. Really the ideal spot. You need to leave yourself just below this whole location. Anything above it will be a very slippery par putt. Yeah, and everything should feed left to right here. So it's like she's got a lofted club here. No nerves in that body. Nice little chip there. And I think Lauren got a little peek about what that ball was doing as, as it was traveling up to the hole. Lauren will have a birdie putt to win this match like she did on the last. And that looks like it was conceded for her par. And Lauren's putt right here is really right on the fall line. It looks like it could go right, but it's one of those that looks awfully straight. We 
did see Ooze Pet I said, on the way up, just kind of maybe go just a little bit left to right. I really don't see any way, Julie, that with the right speed she can play this outside the left edge. Well, this is a nice putt to have, knowing that even if you miss it, you get to go on to the next hole. Don't miss it by too much, though. We've seen these distance putts run by three, four feet by a lot of players today. We and have. really all week. It's kind of been the theme for this week. Lag putting. We have three semifinalists. We will have four if Lauren Stevenson gets this one to go. Curls right. And she goes for the marker. As ooh. Her caddy Scott Patel have a conversation about giving it to her. It's a short one, Julie. Yeah, I think it's shorter than the one she just she just gave. Ooh, <laughs> so much for the friendship of love circle. Well, I don't know if you guys could see it. Cheyenne looked at her caddy to basically ask if she should give it, and he signaled, "Let's see her put it." Well, this is in the back of mind. You gotta. Not get mad or whatever. You got to go through your routine. Pick your spot. And make her put the next one out. <laughs> now to extend this for a par at the 19th. And that one's in. Just catches that left side, but it was a four, so they will move to the 20th hole, the 11th. Julie Stevenson had missed some short putts today, and that one didn't exactly go right in the center. It's in. I'm moving to the next hole. <laughs> well, we were talking about the difficulty of the golf course today. The whole locations are tighter. The wind's up a little bit, but the couple of those holes, particularly the 10th hole is on a slope, you know, probably above two, two and a half percent slope. And you saw how much break Stevenson's ball had when it died down. And that one, that little tester got me nervous. I flinched a little. That's how yips start <laughs> watching those putts. It, it starts in the booth. Well, Julie, when when you talk to your team next week at the Solheim Cup, what's the conversation about gimmies? What do you guys say to each other about gimme putts? You know what? I leave it up to them uh, and I when we play uh, team matches, I just have one player. You're in charge of giving putts, makes it clean. And uh, but I don't ever say anything. It's 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 in their court. You know, I've been watching Ooh play the last few holes and the spunky up and down she made on the last two holes. And she reminds me a little bit of Hajin Choi, the 17 year old amateur who finished second at the U.S. Women's Open at Trump Bedminster. Just the way she composed herself, or kind of her swing, or misses a little bit to the right. And now, T shot here on 11. Six iron from 159. Very straight ball flight. A little bit lower flight than we see Stevenson's, but a good shot, hole high. Was part of this hole earlier today. You cannot afford to miss this green, Nicole. No, and the real difficulty of this right hole location is that the wind is coming off the right, and with it, this flag stick cut only three paces really hard for any right to left ball flight. Yeah, we, see, we saw Robin Ree in that right hand bunker. It's no good. And this is going to be one less club. This is going to be a seven iron.
go. Quit drawing. Well, she knew it. She took a little less club and wanted to swing at it hard. And unfortunately for her, hits that tier. And we see two putts for birdie here. Stevenson the first to go, and she's got to go up that big hill. It's the 20th hole, final match in the quarterfinals. Lauren Stevenson's birdie putt here on the 20th hole. And Brad, absolutely the most, the difficult putt out of the two of them. She's going to have to putt up the slope and then back down, moving to the right virtually the entire way. And the thing is, you know, she gets this low of the hole, that break's going to really take it. She needs to play a little more break, just kind of let it feed in there. You know, you got to play that early left to right, and then it stops breaking at the top. This has been such a difficult putt for everyone all day long. Yeah, he's got a good putt there. Oh! oh what a great putt. Good read, Brad. No, good body language. And to kick it in. Oh, about time she gave her a putt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, after I saw that last putt, I might have made a putt it. <laughs> Just kidding. Now can this 13-year-old from Chinese Taipei, can she do it? And this is one of those putts, Brad, that looks like you have just got to get it started on the correct line. It is very fast. Good putt, and that was fooled a lot of players. It stays oh, up to the three. left. Stevenson, three. The good stuff here. All square. Two really good putts. Either one of those looked like they had a chance. <laughs> Let's take a look again at Stevenson's putt. Great camera angle here. Crowds in the back. You got a little left leg kick. Oh, 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 oh. Man. Us. Barely missed. You ever done that, Julie? Oh, yeah. Well, That's maybe not that high. Flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in that vicinity. Oh. Now, the players, the playoff today, they play 10, 11, 17, and 20. No, 17 and 20. 17 and 18. Now, this is a Beautiful little par four. We've talked about this all week. The slope of the fairways from right to left, 326 yards. Must drive it in the fairway. If you hit it out to the right, Stevens got very lucky earlier. Had those trees on the right there. Should set you up for a short iron approach. You've got to avoid the left fairway bunker there. This is a two tiered green. Whole location is in the back right. 27 steps on the green. But you know, Brad. Looking back on it, Stevenson got lucky, but also I think it led to a bogey because she was on that front end and had a difficult two putt. Ended up three putting and losing the hole. So fairway's a must here. I think the advantage here is for Ooh a little bit on this hole. It's not a hole you need length on. She's so composed, it's hard to believe. Brad, she's in eighth grade. That's, that's very impressive playing the level that she's playing right now. The ball. Boy, that's close. That's going to be similar to the stance Robin Ree had. And I really. I'm surprised with this play. She hit driver wide right, hit the cart path earlier. This looks like it's a little bit lower T here. It could be three wood, Nicole. Good ball shot. 
Yeah, that was definitely through. She didn't go to pick up the tee. Gets a good kick. That last little roll gets in the fairway. This is the last match left in the quarterfinals. Cheyenne Lauren Stevenson playing the 20th hole. 21st hole. I said that twice incorrectly. And Brad Cheyenne got very lucky here. She should have a normal stance. This is going to be a pitching wedge from 113 yards, but this hole does play six yards uphill. Coming out of the rough, she might want to just hit this below and let it run on up. She lands it up top. Can she keep it short of the hole? Nope. Not too bad, though. That just crept into the little bit of fringe rough there, and she'll be able to putt that ball. And this is going to be a pitching wedge from 112 yards. The wind is slightly helping off the player's left. You know, Brad, you talked about a green light. This is green light right here. Pitching wet in your hand. So you take that deep breath right before. Oh, she likes it. Yes. Just wow. stops it on a string. It's about the same putt that she missed for par. Yeah, it is. 17. Well, I think that's going to help her knowing that from before. Now, what a beautiful shot there by Lauren Stevenson. Nice smile there from Lauren Stevenson. She wasn't smiling before she hit the shot. <laughs> What's she feeling, Julie? She's feeling nervous. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, extra holes, you don't have time to make a mistake. I mean, this is a big putt for her because she's pretty much let her in on this whole give her a chance to win. Now she needs to take control of this and roll this putt in. You know, what I mentioned earlier about who reminded me of Hajin Choi, 17 year old Korean sensation that we saw at US Women's Open. It's really the, the, the lack of emotion she showed. You know, she just seemed so composed and experienced. and. You wouldn't expect somebody from this age to be able to feel that yes. look like she's been there yes. and belongs. Yeah, she's just going about her stuff. It's, it's almost like it's just another tournament for her. As you know, anything above this hole is going to be very, very fast. Plus, She's on a natural down slope, she's, so she's going to have to put this ball a little farther back in her stance than she normally would. We've seen a lot of these balls just that first little putt hop out of there. Really, at most, she only has to get this ball on the green about eight feet, and it's all going to funnel down to the hole. I think that rough grass really going to affect this too much going down the hill. It doesn't look like it's heavy in front. Well, she made that motion as soon as she hit it. She knew, didn't she? You know, she picked up her foot like, oh, I just gassed it. She's lucky it didn't roll all the way down that hill right there, and she's. Still away. Obviously, still away. See what this ball does out of there. Yeah, it came out nice. She just hit it a little too hard. Maybe she does have some nerves, but we can't see them. Hey, everybody's got nerves. Well, anybody, she doesn't make this putt. Anybody that says they don't have nerves, it's not alive. She doesn't make this. Lauren Stevenson advances. Let's not forget, Brad, from a very similar putt and regulation, Warren knocked that putt by about eight feet. So really, it's no gimme to putt. This putt up the hill, moving to her left. Most players have missed this to the right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, so right of what? <laughs> Like a 
got swallowed by a vacuum cleaner that went down so fast. That was beautiful. And even though this is a similar putt, it is a little bit of an easier putt. She's not as above the hole as she was in regulation. So even though it's a quick putt, it won't be nearly as fast as the last time she played this hole. I made the comment before when she was playing this hole that she ended up taking a little bit more time. Mark Sweeney, the founder of Aimpoint, teaches players to use their feet to read the amount of slope in a break. There's a formula based on the speed of the greens to how many fingers you hold up and how far away from your face you would hold them. Oh, I know it sounds complex, but it's, I always say, modern day plumb bobbin. With these greens so fast, it's probably hold up five fingers. Throw some nerves in there too, Julie. Yes. Now to win the match. Was a difficult putt, a little bit of a pull. Four, Stevenson four. The match remains all squared. We go to 18. <laughs> Disappointing, Lauren Stevenson there. Looked like she had a real chance. But you could see the amount of slope on the green and how much that putt broke. She had to play that a cup outside. And what a putt by Ooh. Better part of 12 feet, slammed it right in. Now they make their way back to the 18th. They're all square. Went into this hole earlier after Stevenson missed a short putt similar to the one she just missed for a par. And Ooh with the honors. Previously in regulation out of that right hand bunker. Would have been Stevenson's second birdie and just the second birdie in this match. Failed to get that to go at the 17th. And truly, that's got to start weighing on you mentally. Yeah, 17's not been lucky for her. Three putt in the first in the morning. That was not an easy putt. I mean, it broke probably a cup left to right. It's like she got a hold of that one right there. She's going to have a short iron left into that whole location in the back right. Well, this match is now on its 22nd pole. And let's take a look at how we got there. Between Chai Yin Wu and Lauren Stevenson. Lauren Stevenson here at the first hole. Third shot in this. Of course, all square match early on. A great little chip shot there out of the rough. Chipping right back up to that hill. So she's got a little bit of break there. But this is where the short putt started to go wrong for her on the very first hole of the day. Kind of pulled that one. She would lose the hole, go one down. Now at the ninth is for a par. That wasn't quite in the middle either. It's just got going just a little bit left. Now at 10, this four par to win the hole and go one up. That was a solid cut there. Now Stevenson at the 12th, this is her second shot. And she makes a great iron shot here with an eight iron. You can tell when she likes it, she starts walking it to the hole, a la Christy Kerr. herself about an eight footer for birdie she would win that hole to go two up now at 15 second shot two up in control of this match yeah and she only had 99 yards to the hole and just flies it over the green tough hole location there at the 15th Ooh, here this hole was won by par all four matches who would do it Stevenson 
just one up now at the 17th similar putt the one you just saw this for a par to have the hole yeah, it looks like she just pulled out a little bit the match is all square match is all square and these two putts we will remember this to extend the match at the 18th and she pours it right in the heart now at the 21st, again, has to make it. And Brad, right in the heart again. We talked about her savvy, ability to make a putt with the pressure on like that. Just a solid stroke. That is textbook. Now she's a little disadvantaged being so far behind again. The driver, Lauren Stevens. Who's second shot here at the 18th? Hit it right in the greenside bunker earlier and Shane she's further out here she's gonna have 175 yards to this back right hole location the good thing is she does have a very flat body Scott Patel there on the back the 2015 club champion here at San Diego Country Club This is going to have to be an awfully big six iron because the wind has slightly changed a little bit in the player's face now. Julie, that was never the right club. Well, she definitely swiped it a little, mis mishit it, but looks like she's going to have a fairly simple chip up the hill. Now Lauren Stevenson second. And from 52 yards closer. This is going to be a pitching wedge from 123 yards. You know, Lauren's got to one of these times step up and make one of these putts or make a birdie because you just keep letting her in. You're going to end up making a mistake and losing this match. Stevenson and she'll have another putt for a birdie a makeable one it has been a back and forth affair between these two players and completely different approaches Stevenson's been hitting great golf shots not able to convert the putts who has been converting must make par putts well I'd rather be able to putt good than hit it good because if you make a lot of putts it makes up for a lot of mistakes it's been a great match you know we haven't seen a lot of birdies today a lot of pars are winning uh, I think the golf course really toughened up today and um, the player said you know I was just trying to make pars and maybe make my opponent make a few mistakes and that's pretty much what happened with all the matches yeah, and Brad now at the 18 Stevenson hits a great shot and there has a birdie putt what does who have to be thinking as she approaches this third from just off the green well my guess is she's thinking I'm going to chip this thing in you know she did a got up and down from the bunker here with a long bunker shot hit it in there close both those putts she, she just made her two putt there on on 17 the 21st hole that was dead center it was perfectly played before in regulation on this hole and that chip shot she hit on the 10th the 19th hole you know we were almost questioning is that too much loft it went up there gimme distance away and I'm sure she's looking at this thinking, you know what, I should probably make this. Well, that, you know, she's been chipping and putting well. And if you're, if you're putting well, it makes up for a lot of mistakes. You know, even 52 yards ahead, if you're, if you're putting well, yeah. you're getting the ball in the hole first, wins a lot of matches. Julie, really, it's the unblemished mind of a 13-year-old, isn't it, Nicole? They don't have any scar tissue or nerves <laughs> when you're that young. Well, ooh, just short. We'll have a pitch with her third. And Lauren should really be watching this line closely. A little surprised that she's not closer because this should be going nearly right past her mark. Well, maybe she'll sneak in there after she hits it. She's going to have to have a long way to sneak into it. She's <laughs> off this left side of the green. What a golf shot. Chai Yin Wu again saves par. Unbelievable touch. 
I think she just said I pulled it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Probably told her caddy bad read. Who's playing in her first ever U.S. Women's Amateur Championship, trying to become the youngest champion ever at just 13 years old. But Lauren Stevenson will again have a birdie putt to win the match. And the difficulty here is that she's putting through some different shadows. And again, if she was a little closer to Cheyenne's, she would have gotten a very good read. It's just kind of my, the, the same putt Cheyenne had to to win on 18. I mean, no, to it, tie her on 18. It, exactly, Julie. It looks like it'll go a little left, but once it gets to the hole, it, it will flatten out as we saw Cheyenne's ball really stop turning. Julie, just the one birdie between these two happened on the 12th hole from Lauren Stevenson. She's had her opportunities, that's for sure. Needs to make this or they'll do this four hole stretch again. Goes by oh, Becky. Lauren Stevenson can't get it to go. How many chances will she have to win this match? Chai Yin U scrambles her way to another hole. As they make their way back to the 10th. They played 10, 11, 17, and 18. And they'll go back and play 10th for the third time today. This is another long hole. Today it's playing 409 yards, so it does play in the Lawrence hands. Good shot. Great shot. Go ahead, take a break. Good ball there for who? Stevenson a pit stop, so she's now making her way to the 10th tee. This hole is played the third hardest hole. You got the first hardest hole on 18, and you come right around to the third hardest hole on 10. Really with 10, 11, and 18. You really don't have a lot of birdie holes. Maybe 17 is probably a one hole you look to birdie. Hop there off that one, and it's going to be perfect in the left side of the fairway. This match summary all square seven holes. Stevenson's led seven, and U has led eight. Did any gather their inner Sophia Schubert? She birdied this hole early in the round, number on number 10. They need someone needs to make a birdie here. Who <coughs> will be first to go? And from Cheyenne's ball, she can barely see the top of the flag stick. Luckily hitting a much better drive this time around. She's going to be 11 yards closer. Plus, she's going to be in the fairway. Yeah, she's, she's got the USGA flag in the background. That might be a great place for her to aim. And really right now is the most calm the wind has been all day long. That's because it's getting late. 82. Yeah. Nicole, okay. how is Stevenson's demeanor after these continued missed putts? She definitely seems frustrated as she was walking off 
the last 18th green, she kept yeah, slapping the face of her kind of putter. Right and, you know, like I said, that was just a misread. You got a good line? Commit to it. What's your yardage, Nicole? And this is going to be a four hybrid from 182 yards. There's a golf shot. Trip. Golf shot it is. Great approach there from Wu. Scott Patel calling it in the air and she'll have a birdie putt. And that's a smart shot too, just with when you got a four hybrid in your hand, you're looking for the middle of the green. Good extension, great lake work. That's a great golf swing right there with both her legs and arms extended so long through the follow through. Right. Minus, minus, minus three or minus four. Still a little bit of wind from the right. Yeah. With her father Charles, who's on the back. Three yards closer than she was earlier. This is going to be again same club, eight iron from 153 yards. Well, I think we she should aim at the same place. Flag, just a natural draw, bring it on in, and the wind. Knocks it. Oh, what a shot. Wow. She'll have another putt potentially to win this match. A dart from Lauren Stevenson. And a look back at the putts she hasn't been able to convert. This is the first one at the 17th to have the hole. One up would have been Dormy. Oh, four. Stevenson five. The match is she all blows square. that through the break. It lifts out now at the 21st for Birdie to win the match. That one misses wide. Now on her 22nd hole, another great iron shot and a birdie putt to win. I really think that was just a misread right there. That looked like a pretty good stroke. Iron play has been locked in for the 20 year old, but just hasn't been able to get the putter to cooperate. And this putt she has right here, it's got a good deal of break. It's not just like a right edge. She's going to have to play that three balls out. One more look at that approach from Lauren Stevenson, eight iron. And She's got a really nice swing, compact swing. No loose parts in that swing. That top tracer showed it right at the flag stick, and it was. And who's reaction to that great shot from Stevenson? Yep, you got to clap sometimes for your opponent. <laughs> Who will be first to go with her birdie effort? And Shane, we talked about all the makeable putts that Lauren had. She needs to be standing awfully close to her ball mark right now because I'd almost be surprised if Cheyenne didn't ask her to move it. It is exactly on her line. This is one of those putts again that it's uphill, but then as it approaches the hole, it's going to break left and pick up speed. And just right at this hole, I mean, it just dives. You got to add a little bit more. It almost comes in at three o'clock. And there you go. Now she's going to move the mark. So 
So that in itself should tell Lauren, stand awfully close, Julie, right? Yes. <laughs> Looks like she's going back. Julie, one of the coolest things about watching these amateur championships is these relationships. You see players and caddies that didn't know each other before the week, you know, game. This is a, a local player, a, a great player in his own regard, and they've been working hand in hand together in this match. It's not only the, the caddies, it's the housing that you stay in. You know, some of my housing I stayed in as an amateur and as a rookie are some of my best friends. It's, uh, it's the beauty of amateur golf and being pro as a first year player. That ball, that ball hit the mark of Stevenson's. Might just be inside of hers, but I'll leave her a testy putt for a par and Stevenson will, and this is not a broken record, have a birdie putt to win the match. She might be standing right on her mark. Well, all the putts that we've seen Lauren miss have been left to right. So this is a right to left putt. Maybe she'll have a little better vibe on this one. And this as a as a player, when you start missing putts, it seems like you're putting to a thimble. So it's really hard to you know go through your routine and still be positive. But this is what she needs to do right now. And Julie, on this putt, if there is any deceleration, it's just going to break hard left right off the start. So she has to make sure she strokes all the way through this and hits a good solid putt. And this one will win her the match and advance her to the semifinals. Another short miss for Lauren Stevenson. Another look at this, Julie. Just ran out of, as Nicole said, just ran out of speed. We'll see if who can escape again. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but Lauren, she can't even watch right now. Her back is to the hole. As much as Stevenson has struggled, who has been rock solid with these par putts and does it again. All four, Stevenson four. The match remains all squared. We go to 11. You're kidding. Stevenson has been throwing dart after dart in these extended holes, not able to convert a single putt. And who has made everything. And Julie, now fatigue is how to start setting in for these players, no matter how young they are. It's been a long week already. Yeah, I'm not sure it's fatigue. It's got to be frustration for Lauren, and it's got to be, who has got to be just happy that she's in this match. She's probably can't wait to get to the next hole. This is a really hard hole to birdie. You got to make a long putt or hit just an amazing iron shot to birdie this hole. Ooh, looks almost stoic. She's so unaffected by this thing. It's like nonchalance, which is a great attitude to have in match play. And you know, she keeps having the tee here. I would think a good smart shot to the middle of the green is what she wants to do here, Nicole. Yeah, but, but Brad, again, because the wind dying down, this just made this right hole location a lot easier than when we were here a few holes back. This is going to be a, the exact same club that she hit earlier, a six iron from 159 yards. Looking iron there and gets that one to land perfectly into the slope. It kills it. And now that's on the exact same line where she was Great just job. a few minutes ago from a much shorter distance. What a shot from Lou. 
This again will be the same club she hit earlier. This is a seven iron. The problem with missing that many short putts, you just are thinking, how close do I really have to hit it? And she's having to put a lot of pressure on her iron game right now, Julie. Exactly right. And this is where she can't get too aggressive here. She's had a lot of great swings. Just needs to do another one. Beautiful golf here for this match. Just an incredible shot by Stevenson. I mean, she's pulled herself together and to see who to stick it in there close and then answer it right on top of her. And maybe this is what Stevenson needs to be away. That's a good point, Brad. Maybe first in wins this thing. Well, her dad, Charles, is carrying the bag. It's emotional support. He's got a lot of work. These last five holes is trying to figure out something to say to your daughter. You know, I really thought that she had a much better looking routine on that putt. She got up there a little quicker. There wasn't as much indecision. I think Nicole Castrali said it well before. If she just eases off a little bit on that putt, she could miss it low. We saw the amount of break this whole day on this tempo in particular. But it's just been just solid play from Ooh as well. The ability to get it up and down and now that straight on six iron. She's close and she knows what this putt does. I wonder if they can really understand each other if they're how much English they can speak. Well all I know is Ooh's had a lot of one putts. I think she's only had one green while she's two putted in this playoff. Lauren's dad, Charles, just said to her mom, you're gonna have a give her give her a heart attack. Have her to watch this thing. That's the toughest thing as a parent is to watch. Can't imagine. I get nervous right now watching these these two. You don't want either one of them to lose. Because that way my mom has a lot of gray hair. <laughs> you can see the lengthening shadows have changed every time they've played this hole. Stevenson will be first to putt. And this is a putt that it just has the look you can easily <laughs> knock it three, four feet by the quicker of the two putts for sure. We haven't seen many putts today from up here, if any. Well, I think it was just harder earlier, Brad, with the wind really whipping from right to left. But maybe now at this length of putt, she can just free herself up, not try to be so perfect. All the break in this putt is going to be in the first six to eight feet. It's going to shoot right. And as you called it earlier, everything just flattens out I, as it approaches the hole. I like what you said, Nicole, earlier, just saying, hey, look, maybe this will free her up a little bit. You know, she's trying so hard to make those. She knew every putt she had was to end the match. Maybe this one. A little different attitude. Looks a little quicker, like you said, Brad, a little more decisive. Good stroke. Oh, like we've seen before the ball just edging left down there. Boy, a really good effort. And now, ooh, with a chance to close this match out for the first time in how long? Oh. And Brad, she is wasting no time. She got that ball down so quick. And this very, very similar. Obviously, about half the distance of earlier. And it just does not break right at the hole. No, if anything, it'll just stay an ounce left. Like earlier, it must be hard to see that ball going that way. Stevenson's going to make her putt it and make up for that one. <laughs> made her putt. I can't remember what hole. <laughs> well, they just Ten. gave it yeah. to her. Now back on the 17th hole again. Ooh, their driver. 
up the right side. Gets the same kick that Stevenson got. They played this hole just before. And now we'll Lawrence Stevenson elect to play three wood again. I think U took three wood out there too because she got so close to that bunker on her last hole. Last time she played here. That left green side bunker is your target. Plays a little draw and she's got a wonderful ability. To control her trajectories. They're playing the 25th hole. This is now the second most ever played in this championship. This championship's been around for 117 years. This is the 25th hole. Cheyenne. Okay. Second shot. Whatever you're comfortable with. Draw a little bit. Ball slightly above her feet. This is going to be a nine iron from 127 yards. Nicole, I love what her caddy just said to her. Whatever you're comfortable with, it's going to draw a little bit. Beautiful stuff. Well, she didn't get all of it to get it all the way back there, but she knows the line there. That's similar to the line where she was when she made that just unbelievable par saver. And now Stevenson. Really couldn't have a better angle being on the left side of this fairway to this right hole location. Cut six paces off the right. This is just a gap wedge from 90 yards. Another beautiful iron shot by Stevenson, and now it's really time to have that fortitude inside. You've got to just talk yourself into this. Yeah, you know, I do like the way she's really handled herself. You know, she hasn't got her head down. She keeps hitting great shots, great drives. And Julie, she's so impressive. You know, she can hit those iron shots. You know, her, her drivers up in the air. Look, let's take a look at this swing now. Here, you see her weights forward. Here, this is going to be a hard-looking wet shot. Down into the ground, descending bow. Little Jordan Spieth like there with that bent left elbow. I mean, driving that right side forward like Justin Leonard or Tom Kite. Yeah, we have not seen her miss a green. I mean, she's no. been impressive. But like a lot of the great players, she hits the longer clubs way up in the air. And she has the ability to control the trajectory and bring the short irons down, which is a great combination to have. Plus the power. Now she's got to translate it into a good putt here. Or could Ooh do something unexpected? I don't think it'd be unexpected. <laughs> Good point. Look how long these shadows are. The camera lightens up the true light what these players are seeing. What's it feel like down there, Nicole? It's actually gotten a bit cooler, and there's quite a few people out here. I, I they both kind of kind of looked around and <laughs> surprised how many fans have stuck around but they're seeing some very good golf. Dare we say the ultimate test right here. <laughs> this is unreal. The ultimate mental test right here. For sure. Nicole how close is this putt to the line she had earlier. Uh, a, a little similar. This one's going to have a bit more movement. It's going to go right the first half of the putt, and then the last part of it will move left towards the hole. And as, we, as we noticed with Lou, she, her speed of her putts have been beautiful. You know, they, even if she's missed the putt, it's always been right around the hole. I think it's a very good credit 
to the superintendent here. Even late in the day, these greens are still rolling beautifully. Another good putt. She had to give that one a hit up the hill. Now it seems like every hole we've played, we said now Stevenson to win the match. Can she do it this time? Brad, I have one word for this putt. Fast. <laughs> this is going to be the quickest one she's had on this green so far. If this was in regulation, you would just be trying to cozy it down there, and if it went in, it went in. Is this a right to left? Or no, it, left to right. No, it, it'll move just ever so slightly to her right. And again, you know, when you're nervous, this is just one that you need to get started on the right line, and everything slopes from the back of the screen to the front. But this has the look. You could easily knock this forth four or five feet by if you're not careful. Well, like you said, all you have to do is just get it online, get it rolling. You don't have to worry about hitting the ball. Now for Birdie to win the match. Lawrence Stevenson. Down. Oh, four. Stevenson, four. That the was a surprising give to me we'll there. To and Brad, we are one hole away from tying the longest match in U.S. women's amateur history. It happened back in 1996, went 27 holes. Joellen Erdman ended up beating Grace Park. We've only seen one match ever go 26 holes, and guess what? You are watching it. I have to say, the last four strokes at Lauren, I mean, they're not easy putts. She's hit good putts. Um, I think 18 last time she just misread. 10, I don't think she hit hard enough. So she's got to take a little solace in that at least she's hitting them more than she's aiming. Of all the holes they play in the playoffs, this is the one where I think Stevenson has the biggest advantage. I agree. And it's just hard to believe they tied these last eight holes with pars. Julie, that found the flat area. That's. Kind of the rare thing for those drives to find that's really a big, big advantage for Ruth. Now Stevenson. She said two beautiful drives in the playoffs. See if she can do this for the third time. So high it goes out of the picture, doesn't it? And we are back playing the 18th hole. Chai Yin U and Lauren Stevenson in a back to back par battle that is yet to end. They've been chatting a bit here on the 18th. Julie, do you ever remember playing this late in the match? For, have you ever gone this many extra holes? I have not. I have not. I've got to hand it to Lauren. She's. I feel like she's really kept her composure. She hasn't gotten down. Still hitting really good quality shots. I could really so expect to see like a, a snap hook or something. Something. <laughs> I just feel like I would do that easily after missing <laughs> those putts and being so frustrated. You would have never missed those putts. 
Oh, ooh, those drives. Who shot 73-77 had to get through an 11 for 8 playoff just to get into match play. Now in one of the longest matches in the history of this championship, but looks like a good lie for her second. Yeah, she's going to have 176 yards, really learning from being short earlier, taking one more club. This is going to be a five hybrid. Wind is slightly coming out of the player's left. This is a good club for her, Nicole. She gets a little more height to it, the ball. And once again, just not enough bat. It's going to leave her a lengthy putt. She's been very good on her speed, though. And now Lauren Stevenson. And Julie, I can't remember the last bad iron shot she hit. It's been dart after dart. She hasn't hit a bad iron shot. I haven't seen one all day. Last birdie she made was 14 holes ago on 12. The only birdie of the whole match. Just like last night. Hit in the hole. Dad just said hit in the hole. That's good. That's good coaching. And this is going to be from a little further back than the last few times she's played this. This is a nine iron from 141 yards. And she might oh. just have done it. <laughs> you got to admit, that's some of the best ball striking I have seen in a match. Consistent. And it's been the same move. Swing, walk after it, lands just a bit short and kicks up close. That the closest we've seen from Stevenson in this marathon match here at the 18th she'll have a short look a very very short look for a birdie ooh on the front and look right there her dad giving her the happy gilmore advice putting's tough just hit it in the hole she just about did it you know what i like she did there she played the ball a little bit farther back in her stance a little bit more of a penetrating draw Took the flight down so she could get a bigger hop. Here's a good look at it now. Played a little more draw, walked right after it. Brad, that's a big nine iron, 141 well, yards. And plays that's what a little I bit meant. up. You know, for yeah. her, she flew that 140, took a big bounce there, getting the release. And boy, look at that green now. There's no sun where that green is now. And that's some determination. And Julie, you've got to give credit to Lauren Stevenson. A lot of players would have mentally given up, checked out after missed putt after missed putt, and he's, she's just continued to come back and hit great golf shots. That's why I've been saying. I mean, I've been very impressed with her demeanor. She's never really gotten down. I mean, she got mad at herself, and that, that's fine. You want to, you know, do what you need to do, but she got right back in there and hit the quality golf shot that she needed to do. I mean, and I'm saying high quality golf shots. It's, it's been very impressive, her ball striking. Now Chai Yin Wu from the front of this green will have a long look and maybe finally a putt she has to make. Shane only 69 feet to be exact. And this is gonna be a slow one up the hill. And again, as we've seen so many of these, just at the very end, it will stay right. This 13 year old will not go away. We've waited for some fireworks and we're getting them. 
I mean, not only the line, but the speed to get that ball to the hole. <laughs> Look at that face. You know what? Wouldn't it be great if who gave this putt to Stevenson? <laughs> Just please. Stevenson standing up there thinking she'd have a birdie putt for sure to win the match. Now must make this to extend again and go to a 27th hole. I can tell you down here on the ground, that putt never looked like it was going to get to the hole. Well, all it needed was that one last roll. This is the easiest putt that she's had. Inside right. But it's the first she's had to make this to extend the match. And she does it. A couple of birdies at the 18th. They're going to 27. And why not? Chai Yin U from the front of the green with one of the greatest clutch putts you will ever see. And let's take another look at this. Is it going to move? Is it going to move? It's like Oham. Just another putt. What else can you do? She said, come on. <laughs> Little golf clap. Nice sportsmanship right there. Who has been really emotionless throughout this entire match with the big fist pump. We're going back to 10. I guarantee it. the other three matches, they're probably already in bed. Herder's going to give her a nice angle. That was an unbelievable putt. It's the first time I've seen anybody eat or drink anything yeah. <laughs> in about two hours. Now Stevenson, she's hit a real pretty draw on this hole each time. See if she can do it again. Little kick. What? Yeah, I think it didn't, it didn't bounce right, so I think it's fine. And that's just in the first cut. And Julie, the USGA has been hosting a lot of championships for a lot of years, and this putt's going to go into that top ten. That's going to be in their highlight reel, that's for sure. It's like it had eyes. Scott Patel or Caddy with the emphatic fist pump. Chai Yin U with the shot of this championship. A 69 footer for birdie. We've been waiting for birdies. We've seen a lot of pars. And finally, we get two on the same hole. That was unbelievable. I have to say, I didn't expect two par, I mean, two birdies on that hole. One, yes, not two. And I'm, I'm pretty sure Lauren didn't expect it either. But you got to hand it to her, man. She just keeps coming after you. Brad, you're watching oh. someone that's just leaning on the putter, leaning on the putter, leaning on the putter, and finally gets one for a birdie. Well, it's each hole seems to be extended in the most unlikely ways. That one, of course, yeah, yeah, ooze great putt, you know, and then unfortunately for Lauren Stevenson, she's disappointingly missed a few makeable putts, but they've both hit some great golf shots, some great chip shots. This is kind of exciting, and I mean, it's getting to the stage now where this is becoming an endurance test. You know, we, we joked about them not having to eat or drink anything, but remember the winner of this match has to get up early tomorrow, and all three of these other matches have been in, probably watching the Red Sox-Yankees game for a long time. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure that's what they're doing. This is 27 holes. They've played 26 on the 27th in a look right there. They've now made U.S. women's amateur history and have a chance to be the longest ever if they have here at the 10th. Ooh, and Stevenson. It's been 10 years since a match went 27 holes. 
just incredible. Sometimes they go extra because somebody misses one, and it was nice to see a couple make. And kudos and credit to Lauren Stevenson. Has missed a lot of putts, was able to get that birdie putt to go. Granted, it was a short one, Julie, but still, she hey, had to make it. I hear you. When you haven't seen any go in, those short ones look very long. There's a scorecard rolling through. That's 18 holes. That's only about half the story at this point. And you see, all square, all the way through them. It's been pars until 26. And then they matched birdies. This ball is sitting down in the rough. Again, it's going to be below her feet. Very easy to catch a right squirter here. Can you see it? Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's where the flag is, right? I like it. Just, you see that tree? Yeah. Just maybe on the left edge. This is going to be a five hybrid from 185 yards. Came out hot. She got a little bit of a break there. It stayed on top of that hill and didn't roll all the way down. Her chipping's been on point, though. Well, I'm thinking, I just put it right there, and it's 146 in the front. A little downwind coming out of the It's just coming this way. Might yeah. Up a little bit if you but I don't want to play 50 right now. Okay. Much. Be aggressive. Charles telling her, be aggressive, last thing he told her, and here we go. And she has a very good lie. This is going to be a eight iron from 163 yards, definitely playing for it to release. Nicole, can she see that the, her ball's over the green? Oh, definitely, okay. definitely. She just needs to land this about five paces on the green. just comes up short, so both players failed to find the putting surface here at the 10th. And that's Lauren's first really green miss in the last nine holes, or eight holes. You mentioned the longest match in U.S. women's amateur history. The longest in USGA history is 28 holes. Happened at the 1930 U.S. Amateur and the 1960 Junior Amateur. But we'll see what happens here at the 10. Lauren Stevenson going through an emotional roller coaster for sure over the last 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I have to say who's been on that same coaster. She's had to make a lot of great shots, a lot of good putts to stay in this game. Well, Julie, Mickey Wright said she was going to watch every second of this coverage. So I'm wondering if she's sticking around for the hour and five minutes extra we're bringing this match. It's 10.05 in Florida. So, Mickey, if you're watching, thanks for sticking around. Hey, Mickey, if you're watching, well, come one, help us. I know one thing. Mickey would know that Wu's chip shot here is a lot harder than Lauren Stevenson's beyond this green slope. Sloping backwards towards the front and a huge break right to left. You're, you're right, Brad. Cheyenne definitely with the more difficult. It's not only going to be fast, it's going to be breaking a good 10 feet to the left. And another negative the ball is sitting down in this rough. She actually has a wedge out. And I think that's a very good play because of the slight rise. Really an unfortunate break if Warren just flies at about three yards 
farther. It's perfect. Well, especially coming out of that rough, you think it's going to give have a nice little hop right up there. Sometimes you hit right into that pull in and it just stops. This shot will definitely test the nerves of this young player. I'm not sure she has any nerves. Well, we'll soon find out. <laughs> I know she has a lot of skill. We haven't seen you blink once in these extra holes. We'll see what happens here with the third. It didn't go. She might have the best short game in the world. And that's coming from Brad Faxon. Think about this. Wow. Jordan Speed's watching this. My God. It was carrying some speed, but. Not that much. I mean, it was well played. Get it. Oh! Stevenson must be wondering what she's got to do. Man, pot this. I, know. I just think that she's making this harder than it is. Cheyenne's shot just made this shot a lot harder. <laughs> That's the good point. point too. And Nicole, that looks like that looks like it's like a lob wedge. Yeah, you you would think if you're going to chip this, put a little pitching wedge in the back of your stance and just get it going on the green. Now, what do we know? Yeah, that's why we're in the booth. Well, that's a putt away from making history. Asking if it's good, and I'm not sure who knows what to do. Julie, I've never liked that where you have to ask. Yeah. I mean, you go through your routine and you just expect to put it unless they say something. Yeah. I usually bum around trying to find a mark. See if it takes a little while and then they just, just say pick it up. Well, there's a little break here though, isn't there? But you know what? I'd probably give it to her, but she hasn't been exactly steady on these putts. Short. Stevenson's going through her whole entire routine. Another putt here for par to extend the match. This one just an inside left putt. Well, let's see if we're going to go 28. Stevenson for par to extend. Knocks it in. So here we go. Now the longest match in the history of this championship ties the longest match in the history of USGA championships. And for you history buffs, 1930, Maurice McCarthy took down George Van Elm. 1960, Michael Iserman defeated Patrick Honeycutt. Probably would win some Jeopardy games with those names. Well, if I'm Lauren Stevenson, I'm a little bit upset right now. <laughs> Cheyenne, ooh, you know, she makes that 69-footer. She makes her putt that two-footer less than two feet. And yeah, I think that was just uh, her, the caddy. I don't think she really, totally. I think she was going to give it to her, and caddy said made her make her putt it. Now about five hours and 22 minutes on the golf course, and we just got word we're about 26 minutes to sunset, Brad. Well, I know, uh, I think who is very happy that she's still in the ball game here right now. That putt, if that chip shot doesn't hit the flagstick, that's 10 feet down the hill. And now she's on a hole that she's got a little bit of an advantage here with the length of this hole being only 326 yards. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking we're, I'm so confused. We played all these holes. This is where she hit that beautiful six iron before Nichols. And Again, still 159 and still a six iron. <laughs> it's 
the same shot she hit before, but better. She's like a gnat. She won't go away. That's incredible. And now Stevenson's really got to get some composure here. And she knows exactly how that ball breaks, too. Ooh. I guarantee you she'll going to roll that baby right on in. And once again, this is a seven iron. Got her Sage Valley logo hat on. Beautiful course at Aiken where they play a lot of AJGA events. Gets too much spin and brings it back down to the hill where she was. But she almost made that putt. The first time, I know. In regulation. Cheyenne Wu with a big advantage here. Wu well, has been a highlight reel today with that short game. This was virtually a must make on the 18th. Stevenson in close. This from 69 feet. Yeah! And it was perfect. Now on the very next hole, nearly two of the most incredible back-to-back -back hole outs you will ever see. Ooh, from over the green. Rattles the flag stick. Wooden drop, but it was good enough for a half. This match is historical at the U.S. Women's Amateur. Well, Fred Couples just sent me a text. He's watching again and said, this is unreal. It is, Freddie. Definitely make you, horizontal again too. make you want to stay on the couch, won't it? Riveting golf. Well, when we came to this hole the first time in the playoff, the 20th hole, we remarked how Stevenson had a very similar putt from down below. See the giant tier there. It goes up to the right, straightens out. Looks like it's got a chance as it's breaking back to the left there. And what does she have to do to end this match? Well, she's got to make this putt again. She's got to give it another shot. A little acrobatics. Look how close Ooze ball is there on the exact line she was before. We have not seen anybody make that putt, though, Brad. And it's been a tricky one all day long. But if I was going to bet on one person to make it, it might be you. I know. I'd love to see Stevenson remember what she was doing the last time she had this putt. And Brad, this putt, she's actually a little lower into the green. So it's not going to break quite as much uh, at the start. But again, what makes it difficult is the shadows that have become obviously so very long late in the day. Well, she's had a good looking stroke from farther away from the hole and a little deceleration. But she gets close. Let's see what she does here now. Yep, good putt from down there. Now Cheyenne Yu. 28th hole. Chance to close it out. human that thing broke a ton that was a pretty good putt I have to say she probably hit it right where she wanted to hit it less than 20 minutes to sunset I'll probably have a chance for two more holes 
Stevenson still got a little knee knocker here. Paul Bazanko, <laughs> the great putting instructor at the Scotty Cameron studio, is watching this match. She sent me a text saying she needs to start accelerating on these short putts. So let's see if she does it here. And Brad, again, like you said, this is a little longer than she would like. It's an inside right putt, but again, as we have seen, like Paul said, she tends to decelerate on these. So really, in a way, good thing it's a little back down the hill. She should have no problem getting this to the hole. Stevenson makes putt for par. Good two putt. Oh, it's a nice putt. Nice fluid stroke. We will go to 17. This is definitely Groundhog Day. You could just switch it up and go to 12. I know. <laughs> Take a look from down the line there. Yeah, that's good acceleration right there. Maybe she heard you, Brian. Look at that thing moving a little to the right. Well, you got the Poe. Poe's got to be growing a little bit, getting oh. a little bit. And the light's getting flat here. It's harder to read then. And the sun's going down. So walk over to the 17th hole on the golf course, the 29th hole of the day. The Fitbit might be up on the upper end today. Maybe they should just switch the hole location. <laughs> Brad, the USGA was founded in 1894. Match play has been a big part of that organization, and you're seeing for the first time ever a match going 29 holes. In any USGA competition, history, right here at San Diego Country Club. And we're seeing some very good golf, a lot of great golf. Haven't seen a bogey in extra holes. We think well, with these young eyes that we might have 40 more minutes. I wonder if they can go 40 more minutes without making a birdie or a bogey. You know, you said it, Shane, there hasn't been a bogey. There hasn't been a birdie either. All pars. No, we birdied 18. A long putt. See, that's what happens. Yeah. We've been out here so long. Have some more of that ghee butter. <laughs> it's the funniest thing you've ever said. Who finds the fairway again? Good kick right down to the middle. And now Stevenson. Lost that one there. She's going to need to get a big kick. Well, a good lie. Yet, yet to be re seen whether she has a tree trouble here for her second shot. It's got a little bit. Yeah, here's a look at the bracket. We see Vu, Valenzuela, and Schubert sitting there watching this back home at television, probably on dessert by now. <laughs> And we welcome you back. This match, back and forth, it's going the longest ever. Not just in a U.S. Women's Amateur Championship, but in USGA history. Chayin U, Lauren Stevenson on their 29th hole, Brad. Well, it's just been an incredible match to watch in so many different ways. 13 year old from Chinese Taipei. Thrilling the galleries here. Not thrilling, Lauren Stevenson. Now, who's away, Nicole? It yeah. will be Lauren, and she could not have drawn a more beautiful lie out of this right rough. It's sitting perfectly 
on top. The tr she has no issue with the trees in front of her. This is going to be a pitching wedge from 128 yards. I like this play right now. It takes the back out of, out of play. She can go ahead and hit this full. She wanted, but safely on the left side, putting back up the hill. She's used to knocking it about eight to ten feet. She's not used to a 30-footer. And this is going to be a nine iron from 126 yards. It's the first time you has been able to hit last. You can't even imagine her there hitting a, Get back. a bad shot. Go. Go. Right on line. It's like about 15, 16 feet for Ooh. Maybe Stevenson can do something spectacular here. <laughs> Brad seeing some people on social media saying they, they tuned into FS1 to watch some UFC and they've stuck around because it's been such a great back and forth match. You know, it's fun too because now we're here watching this and you're seeing a lot more people respond social media. I just got a text and I hate to say this because it's going to be a name drop. David Wells, <laughs> the great New York Yankees pitchers watching San Diego guy. Yeah, I knew that would excite the truck. All those Yankee fans there. Your Rolodex phone is amazing. Is, am I in there? Who are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nick, what's this going to do? You know, it doesn't have a whole lot of movement. Obviously, this whole green slopes from the back to the front, so it will move ever so slightly to her right. But the main thing here is trying to match the speed, right? It's going to be up the hill. Nicole, all the shadows are gone. How does it feel out there? Is it getting hard to see? It, it actually is but you know I, I would say they probably have about a good hole left in them. It's not like Lauren would need the pin tended from this distance at all. But you can definitely tell that these players are moving a bit slower. I know I am. <laughs> really important to have great self talk right now. You know, you, you got to keep talking to yourself, pepping yourself, especially Lauren. You know, she's gotten a few times where she should have won this match. And the improbable antics here of Ooh. I like the way the caddies have kept them into it too. They're talking to their players, trying to keep them loose, upbeat. They're FaceTiming it to their friends. Fantastic. Big breath right there for Stevenson. I think that long putt from the last hole is going to help her with this one. Looking good. Oh, Lauren oh, Stevenson gosh. just misses that lengthy putt. She has hit some great putts. Can you believe it? I think I was walking that in about two thirds of the way there. Good four feet of break. Looks like right in the center of that putt. And a great smile. We now ooh to win the match. Her caddy pointed to a mark. Just about a cup out on the right. The right. Oh. That was low the whole way. And I guarantee you Stevenson makes her putt this thing. <laughs> Didn't flinch.
This is so short, isn't it? Yeah, but Des still has a little break. In these greens, you have, even on these short putts, you have a little break. It's probably an inside left putt. That's an acceleration. Well, we're going 30 holes, everybody. Sun setting. These two players are not going away. I'm telling you, that putt that Lauren hit, I thought for sure it was in. That's the second bomb she's nearly made. We've had two hit the lip. We had a 69-foot putt go in. We had a chip shot that hit the pin. If you're not enjoying this, you might have to give up on the sport of golf. Now the 18th, hardest hole on the golf course. And the last time we were here was when the fireworks went off. It's still 407 yards. <laughs> but it's going to probably play a little longer because the air is getting heavy. The wind has died down. And that plays into Lauren's hand. First cut of rough. Doesn't look it's too bad. He's gonna have an awkward angle to the hole location to that on the right hand side. Brad, you said if this is the hole she has a real advantage on with her length. Well, she's gotten it out there 300 yards a couple times today and down the hill a high draw. So one right and one left here on our 30th hole. Oh, this is the longest 18 hole match. Now 30 holes. You see 1960, 1930, and this one two holes longer than those two. And here's the putt that basically did this to make it the longest ever. On this 18th, Chayin Wu with Stevenson just a couple of feet away for birdie. Felt like it had to go in. And it did. Stevenson's reaction, all you can do is clap. Stevenson has had a couple herself that have nearly gone. Who's? was the one that did just inside 70 feet the last time they were here on the 18th. <laughs> and you saw Ooze ball in that right rough. This is where Stevenson's ended up. That is a brutal spot here at the 18th. Oh, she might get a drop. Stevenson, 74 68 in stroke play qualifying, won her round of 64 match, three and two, round of 32, four and three, and now round of 16. She won five and four. Nicole's down with this group. Nicole, what does she have with that second? Well, obviously, she's not in a good position where the ball is right now, but I just got in there, and there's a very good chance that her feet will be on the cart path, so she, she could be able to take a drop and give herself a shot at this hole. It looks like if she could just move back a little bit, she has a little bit of an angle. This is where you got to use the rules to your advantage if if it's legal. Watch yourself, sir. Well, she has to take a normal stance. The yes. shot she would hit. With this club, she would hit. And regardless of where the tree or the cart path is, you know, she's going to take the club. If she'd play this shot, it looks like she'd have to hit some sort of a low hook to get it there. And then she has to take nearest point. And then a club length for where the ball would be, which is going to be on the right side of the path. So she might actually be able to get it to the back a little to the right side of the tree. 
Our first to play will be Chai Yin Wu. And she has a good lie from this right rough. This is going to be a, the five hybrid. She's hit here so many times from 177 yards. And like Julie said, there's barely any wind out here right now. That one's over the back. First time we've seen who in that position here at the 18th. Stevenson in that tough lie. Lauren was watching Cheyenne shot very closely. So she knows she's not out of this. She just really needs to put herself in position to give her a good look on her third shot. And sure that hole is not a bad place to play from. A low draw. Those that are just tuning in, that's her dad, Charles, on the bag. And you heard him, Shane, low draw. Just to give you an idea, she's got 137 yards. She has a six iron in hand. Thing is here, she just got to choke down on it, come in steep, hood that club a little bit. Scored it way right, Julie. Yeah, and that's going to be tough. Short sided herself. And they both have tough chip shots here. We have yet to see a bogey in these extra holes. Both players in rough spots here at the 18th. Well, this is another way to play this hole. She's She's really that. <laughs> that's another way to play this hole. It'll look like with that live with a you know, the back of the ball being right up against the lip there of the tree well. That she needed to take more loft and hit more of a descending shot with more loft. Look at this. You know, she had a six iron. I didn't think she could get this thing up in the air quick enough. You see how it just plowed into the ground and skidded out of there. She said, ow. That's really a club that could have used. You know, she only had to hit 136 yards. She could have done that with an eight or a nine iron pretty easily. She's got to hood the club a little bit more. Play it back in her stance. Sure is easy seeing that, I know. saying that here. And you know what? Neither one of these up and downs are easy up and downs. <laughs> you, know, you might think nice who would be in a better position here, but if she's back down the hill off the downhill line to land that on the green, it's going to be hard to stop it close. I'm not even sure Lauren knows how to chip. She hasn't chipped at all. This is her first green she's missed. Surveys what she has left. Ooh, 73 77 in stroke play qualifying. Had to get in through a playoff. Five and four in the round of 64. 19 holes that took her in the round of 32. And she took down the 2014 U.S. Women's Amateur Champion. Three and one in the round of 16. And Julie, really her best chance at getting this close. And she's not looking where I'm looking, but. I would say she needs to almost be looking at that right fringe. And if you hit it up in the fringe, gravity will take it back towards the green. She really needs to be thinking about where do I have the best chance of making a four from. It would be very difficult to fly this right at the hole and get it to stop. Based on those practice swings, she's going upstairs with this. And with the slope of the screen, she's got to definitely aim out there to the right, like Cole was talking about. off the tee and a real tough second now ooh. I really like where she's pointing right here 
again, if she doesn't hit this hard enough, the problem is she could catch that right slope and this could go all the way down to that middle right portion of the screen. So she has to make sure she plays it high enough. Well, if she does, goes, does go all the way down to the front, at least she knows the read. Her short game is just unbelievable what that's going to race by. That is, that's an impressive shot. I mean, she, I didn't think she could keep it on the green. Well, we've seen holes halved with birdies and pars, and there's a chance this one could be halved with a couple of bogeys. And guys, it has just gotten really dark out here. Much more difficult to see the hole and the slope on these greens. The challenge here with Lauren's putt, if she has too much speed at all, this could easily go five, six feet by. It all runs away after the hole. And that gives you a good look at what she's facing right now. Stevenson will be first for par. She gonna do it? Oh. Another lip out for Lauren Stevenson. And there was that four, uh, five, five to six feet that Nicole was talking about. They've had 12 holes in a row. Cheyenne Wu, where the magic happened for earlier, will have a putt to win the match. She do it? She did, right in the heart. The 13-year-old advances. The longest match in USGA history. Chai-Yin Wu cashes another incredible putt. That was one for the ages right there. Very well. Here's the referee. She qualified for this championship when she was 12 years old, wasn't able to play last year. And now after having to survive a playoff through stroke play, 13-year-old Chayun Yu is all the way to the semifinals. Five hours and 45 minutes later, Shane. Well, you say they drive for show and you putt for dough. She made some unbelievable putts today. That is the one that sends her to the semifinals. It took 30 holes. And Lauren Stevenson, after a great putt herself, can only say great playing. <laughs> 